Now, how does one condense 50 years of active and colourful American club history into about 15 minutes? I was talking to my daughter in London the other day and told her, and she says, Mum, 20 seconds per year. So here goes. In February 1966, several members of the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States got together to establish an American club in Auckland. They wanted a social club for the American community and for the people sharing interest in America. The inaugural meeting took place on February 22nd at the RSA Hall in High Street, Auckland. Those present included David Wilson, a miracle consul in Auckland, His Worship the Mayor of Auckland, Dr. McElroy, and Loretta Giles, president of the already established American Women's Club. The principal purpose of this first meeting was to obtain a show of interest by members of the American community, many of whom, whom were American World War II veterans with Kiwi wives. The objectives of the club they drew up have never changed, and I want to state them again today. Firstly, to promote and maintain understanding and friendship between the people of the United States and New Zealand. To promote, foster, preserve and strengthen friendship between members. To encourage and promote among members and others an interest in patriotic, historical, cultural and educational matters. To carry out such activities as may be determined from time to time by the members in general meetings. The first issue of The Voice of the Eagle, the newsletter, was produced in April 1966. The first meeting held by the club as an incorporated society was in June, and Bob Whitman was installed as the first president. Two of the people who signed that original document of incorporation that night were Josie and Keith Coker. Josie is here today, our longest serving member. Her membership number... Her membership number is 12. <laughs> and, the, uh, and the original um, document is over on the table there. Also here today is a long-time member, Joy Joyce. Membership number 202. <laughs> Stuart and Joy joined in June 1997. Did you know that? No. No. <laughs> So in June 1966, the American Club was up and running. Over the years, the club has met at a variety of venues. 1966 to 69, the monthly meetings are at the British Seamen's Society premises in Key Street. And at this time, meetings were followed by a square dance. Americans love to dance. By 1968, membership averaged around 130 members. And this year, the club had its first dinner dance held right here at the Tamaki Yacht Club, a rip-roaring event by all accounts. 1970 to 76, the club used the Danish society premises, Danish House and Parnell. 1977 to 91, the Berkeley Lounge in Mission Bay became the regular venue. And in 1970, 92 to 2004, Rob Hood's here at Tamaki Yacht Club was used for monthly meetings. Over the years, many other venues have been used. The Domain Reception Lounge, the Fisherman's Wharf, the Rose Garden, the Northern Club. One of the early concepts of the club was it should form its own premises as they had done in Sydney. They were, we were so envious of what they had. The building front, Fund was ignored by monthly and uh, raffles and donations. However, despite many attempts over the years to find finance and a suitable venue for club rooms, it never eventuated, but always hopefully waiting for a benefactor. Monthly meetings became a popular format. For many, many years, members started the evening with a complimentary glass of sherry. I know a few that can remember that one. <laughs> A guest speaker usually followed dinner. However, the main purpose of the occasion was always one of friendship and fellowship between members. In recent years, a more casual meet and greet format at an inner city bar 
all restaurants seem to suit the younger and and more uh, and the younger demographic. And now to club events, and there are many. Many resourceful and hardworking members have held the position of entertainment chairman, organising so many notable events over the year. How many of you remember the Independence Day balls during the 70s, 80s and 90s? These were glamorous occasions, held at many of Auckland's best ballroom venues. Tireless ball committees worked to make these events the talk of Auckland society. Pat Kerr, you certainly did your part. The 1975 Bicentennial Ball was held at Trillo's downtown, attended by over 500. In 1997, Bigger Than Texas Charity Ball raised over 20,000 for little Andre McNaughton to travel to Texas for a life-saving operation. Over years, the ball events had themes that were decorated appropriately, such as I'll take Manhattan with a New York yellow taxi cab in the ballroom. My husband, Mike, organized that. To celebrate the Silver Jubilee year in 1991, it was the Silver Dollar Spectacular, and spectacular it was. Some of the other themes were Las Vegas, New Orleans, Hollywood, America the Beautiful. There were always plenty of red, white and blue and even fireworks permitted at some of the venues. The American Club has celebrated every Independence Day holiday for the last 50 years. Celebrating the American's Thanksgiving holiday has always been one of the highlights of the event calendar. Held at a variety of Auckland venues, traditional turkey dinners and pumpkin pie have been enjoyed by many Americans and friends over the years. The American Club has celebrated every Thanksgiving holiday for the last 50 years. Another important date for Americans is Memorial Day. American Club members have attended the Veterans Club Memorial Day service at the Auckland Museum on the last Sunday in May every year since 1966. Each, each year, a wreath for fallen servicemen has been laid at the Hall of Memories on behalf of the club, and members have laid their own tributes on behalf of relatives and friends. The club has celebrated many anniversary events. 1987, the 21st anniversary dinner was at the Berkeley Lounge. 1991, the 25th anniversary dinner was here at Romford's, attended by Ambassador Della Newman. The club produced its own anniversary port and label to mark that occasion. In 1996, the 30th anniversary was at the Rose Garden, organised by the late Janine Rennie. Janine was tragically killed only weeks after this event. 2006, the 40th anniversary, was the home of Consul General Surya Lopez and her husband, Joseph. And now we come to our sporting events. In the club's early years, the annual softball match was Yanks versus Kiwis, played at Long Bay Reserve. In the mid-80s, the Canadian club challenged the American club for the Maple Syrup Trophy, and this became an annual softball event. 2016 was the 30th Maple Cup Challenge. Kim Daly was our club captain, and as you've heard, George Marr, their most dedicated fan. The history of the American Club wins, Team USA 18, Team Canada just 12. Kim Daly formed the American Club Eagle softball team. Under her guidance, they have played in the Auckland Central League since 2006. There have been a range of players, from rookies to all-stars, to minor league players, to members of the American Consulate. Ten-pin bowling and ice skating have been other activities the American and Canadian clubs have done together. In the mid-80s, the Yanks versus Kiwi annual cricket match was started and continued for many years. Records show the Americas never won, despite recruiting a lot of Kiwi ringing. American club baseball was, in, uh, was basketball was introduced for the club teens by Mike Riley during the, the early 1990s. They used the 
College of Education facilities in Epsom on a Saturday morning for many, many years. The Super Bowl. Since New Zealand had access to Sky TV broadcasts, American club members have found a way to watch the game live. In the early days when Sky wasn't ready available, I can recall a game when Sky was set up in a tent on the Rennie farm out by the airport to cater for all the fans. In recent years, it has become a popular uh, event on the calendar, and the Cavalier Tavern in Ponsonby has been a popular place for members to gather and watch the game cheering for their favourite teams. Now, the club has had various charitable events, have raised money. In 1967, under Bob Minkie's presidency, the money was raised for food parcels, which are distributed to needy families through child welfare. In 1981, under Phil McLaughlin's presidency, a fund was set up for Americans in distress at the consulate, with the American Club and the consulate matching dollar for dollar. This was used several times over the years when an American, for one reason or other, found themselves without money. It was a loan, not a gift. 1972, under Mark Larson's presidency, the club installed a phone system at St Andrew's home in Glendowie for an American journalist named Robin Turkle, a sufferer from motor neuron disease. His mother is here today, and his son Daniel is our present treasurer. 2005, under Laurie Neal's presidency, the Friendship Award was established. This is a program where the club should, could assist a young person advancing their educational goals studying in the US of A. In 2010, it was changed to the Peter Brown Award in memory of the late Peter Brown. Peter and wife Pat were outstanding contributors to the club. They have been some outstanding recipients over the years and the award is now ably administered by Peter. Other memorable events. Our Christmas parties have always been one to remember. There was a party at the American Club Stars and Stripe headquarters on the viaduct and Dennis Connor showed up. I'm also remembering the great pool party at the Haywards home in Oratea. Remember that one? And many wonderful Christmas events we've had at the homes of various American consuls. We've had St. Patrick Day celebrations, Oktoberfest, clam bakes, barn dances, boat and fishing trips, wine tours, picnics and barbecues, movie premieres, taken part in cultural festivals, gathered to chair the USA during the Rugby World Cup. We've gone French, Italian, Mexican. We've had great Halloween parties. We clearly love to party. Number 44, Paratai Drive, the consular residence during the 1980s, was the address of the most wonderful parties. I attended them all, but I will reveal no more. <laughs> we have come together to celebrate or commiserate at 12 United States presidential elections. On a sadder note, we, have come together, we came together after 9-11-2001 the daughter of past President Lindsay and Lena Whitaker worked in one of the Twin Towers and was tragically lost her life that day. Our newsletters. The Voice of the Eagle has been the club's communication line since 1966. 453 issues have been published by so many volunteers over the past 50 years. We have on record, record all but a few of these publications. They have progressed through various models of typewriter, manual to automatic, then the computer. We moved to colour with photographs in 2006. And in April 2014, the first electronic version of the Voice of the Eagle went out via email. There is now an American Club website with club news, online event information, event registration and payment, and Facebook. Wow, we have come a long way. Thanks, Beth Coleman. Still, for some of us seniors, it can still be difficult to get your head around. Our affiliations. 
Over the years, the American Club has developed good relationships with various organisations. Auckland consular staff have supported the American Club from its inception. Each new consul general has given their time to help when requested. April, as our consular representative today, thank you. We do appreciate the support the American Chamber of Commerce has given us throughout the years. Thank you, Mike. Over the years, we've worked alongside the American Women's Club and on occasions combining activities. Thank you, Susan. We have joined with the Canadian Club for so many sporting activities. And now to our people. Over 50 years, the American Club has had so many people dedicated to the organisation. There have been 31 club presidents. Most have done two terms of one year. Others have been shorter depending on circumstances. But these people are the ones who have guided the club through the years. I've noted just a few. Keith Coker was president in 1976-77. Jack Pritchard, president in 1978-79. Their wives, Josie and Mary, are here today. While Keith was president, he and Josie represented the club at two functions given in honour of the Queen a luncheon at Trelo's and a garden party at Government House. Do you remember Josie? I do. You do. Some of us will remember Jan Janine Rennie, President 1986-87, and her dedication to the club. There was Lindsay Whitaker, President 1990-91. He and his wife Lena built the club up for a record membership. Pat Brown, President 2006-2007, put her heart and soul into the club. And it was Mike and I were the first two to preside over the club as a couple in 1989 and 90. Past presidents today, here today are Patricia Kerr, Mike Riley, George Ma, Laurie Neal, Kim Daly, Beth Colwyn, and our current president, John Drucker. Each, of one, each one of you has made an outstanding contribution to the success of the American Club. And as important as the presidents are the hundreds of committee members who have volunteered their time and talents to make the club work. I want to acknowledge some past and, and present committee members celebrating with us today. Please stand, if you will. Liz and Susan Hayward. Mike Riley, Mike Riley, Diane Hill, keep standing, George Ma, Jill Ma, Jill Ma, Patricia Kerr, Cindy Sim, Kim Daly. Laurie Neal, Usha Kampala, Tony Scott, Beth Coleman, Peter Malalu, John Drucker, Johan Hensner, Daniel Turkle, and any others I may have missed. It is people like you. It is people like you that have made the American Club what it has been in the past, what it is now, and what it will be in the future. Thank you. Congratulations, American Club, on your first 50 years. Now, I now invite Josie Coker up to cut the cake. Josie being our longest serving member. This is our celebrated. While Josie's just up there, before she actually cuts the cake, I received an email this morning from um, Pat Brown, past president. Just hold it, Josie. Just hold up. And I would like to actually read this to you, because I think this is what the American Club is all about. And I just received this this morning. It's with deep regret and sorrow that I cannot attend the big 50th anniversary function of the Bursley American Club in Auckland. I had major surgery in 
on August 29th and I could not fly for the occasion. Because of this, I regret not being able to catch up with many friends that I have met solely through the American Club. Shortly after I moved to New Zealand, Ken Norton, the then president, was instrumental in finding me work. The actual nucleus of my New Zealand family derived completely from the wonderful friends I met through the club. Kim Daly, Diane Hill, George and Jill Ma, Laurie and Alison Neal, Carolyn and Mike Riley, to mention a few, who have stayed in touch and followed me to Greytown. I couldn't possibly mention them all, and even some of them have now departed with treated friendship I met through the American Club. The death of my beloved husband, Peter, the American Club named the scholarship fund in his memory. This is a wonderful tribute to me and as well as my husband and work and memories and the fantastic time we shared by everyone at the various events and functions. The Auckland American Club will always have a very strong and respected place in my heart. It is a club that has given its all to Americans arriving from abroad and even to those who are not Americans but have an affiliation or an interest in the Americas and American itself. I believe today you are seeing many pictures of the past 50 years, so I will not elaborate on, on any one event. It is a strong club and hopefully it will see another 50 years. My love and hugs to you all and have a wonderful time. I'm here with you in spirit. Thank you, Pat Brown.